Hey there, Beth from Scrapping Wonders, and I wanted to show you how you can make um, your own Midori Traveler's Notebook. And these are all the craze right now. Um, this is a book that I have made before, and I haven't used it yet. But I just used my own paper, my own cardstock. I sewed it instead of um, stapling it. And I had some plain graph paper, and then I've had this... Uh, looks kind of like cloud paper I've had this forever and then this hot pink paper so I just picked out a couple of different sheets of paper I picked out a really nice pattern piece of paper that I really liked and then I seemed uh, sewed everything together so I'm going to teach you how to make your own travelers notebook so the first thing you're going to do is you want to pick out a piece of paper that is double-sided um, so I like this for the front and then this will be the inside of my book. So I have a 12 by 12 piece of paper and I'm gonna trim it down to 8.75 or eight and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And um, that's gonna end up giving me the Midori Traveler's Notebook size after I fold all the paper in half. Now for for this one, again, I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to use, so I picked out regular graph paper that I'm going to trim down to the proper size along with my 12 by 12 paper and I choose graph paper um, because I didn't want regular line paper in case I have ideas or something that comes to me during the 30 days of list prompts that I want to maybe draw out or something like that. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm gonna off camera trim all of my paper down to the right size. Again, that size is 8.75 or eight and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and you can see I have a mess. I've cut all, I've trimmed all of my paper. And for this book, I actually trimmed my cardstock slightly larger. So I trimmed it down to eight and seven eighths by eight and three eighths. Um, so that just gives it just a tiny bit, tiny bit larger than my paper, as you can see here. It's literally just, just an itty bitty bitty bit. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is now that everything is together, is we have to fold everything literally in half. That's the step, is to fold it in half. And that is what I'm going to do. But I'm also, let me see here. I think I might, no, I'm just gonna go ahead. I was thinking about grabbing some binder clips to keep it all together. And I think I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm gonna admit, I did not use binder clips last time and it worked out just fine. What I ended up doing is I trimmed off ex excess paper with um, my X-Acto knife, which was a little complicated, but not too much. And all I can find is these large ones and that's not, it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna be able to fold the paper in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold little by little. I'm not gonna fold the whole stack. I have 16 sheets of paper here. And the reason for that is, is because I have an actual Midori book mm. and I counted how many sheets of paper were in there and it was 16 sheets. So I decided that the ones that I make will be 16 sheets as well. So I have 16 sheets of paper in here total. So it's a little much to try and fold them all at the same time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and as you can see, I'm folding them literally in half and I will be right back. All right, so I have pretty much got everything folded and um, I'm just grabbing my bone folder so that I can get a really good crease in here. And these are pretty much creased pretty well. Um, I did that with the cardstock because because it's cardstock and I really wanted to make sure I had a good crease. Okay, so you can see here, this is what, this is what my book will look like. 
and let me refold it so you can see okay and again I did make it a tad bit taller just so I could fit everything in but I'm going to trim all of this I'm going to trim all of this up so just creases with the bone folder and now what we have to do is get it open to the middle so this is the middle okay and it's really really simple to sew this thing together I just have to gather all of my supplies and then I will be right back all right I'm back and um, the things that you need you need a paper piercer of some kind I have a um, a needle from uh, the we are memory keepers and the edge is pretty blunt so it's not it's you'd have to push really hard to get through your skin so I like these and then I just picked out some regular embroidery thread and I went with this this beige neutral um, color here that I want to use I thought about white but I decided I didn't like a stark the white was too stark for me so you're gonna get some of your thread here and here we go and I always end up taking more than I need so I know that I don't need that much but I'm gonna take it anyways and you gotta get it through your needle okay so that's good and then I have the Tim Holtz um, paper piercer I like it because it's retractable so you see here and then I can shove it back in and for this step I am going to use the binder clips because it's important even though they're massive it's important that all of your papers stay together and they don't move during this process so I'm gonna clip it there and I'm going to clip it here now I also had had a we are memory keepers um, piercing mat but can't seem to locate it right now so I think these Amy Tangerine um, ones that come with her her st stitching kit will work just fine so what you're gonna do is you're quite literally you're going to poke holes and and I um, extend my my needle pretty far because I want to make sure that I, I go through all of the papers so you can see here I sewed and I ended it here and I started it here now you don't want to go all the way to the ends of your book because then you can risk tearing your actual book so I'm gonna start at about here and you don't need like tons of holes you just that seems about a decent amount of space to me and I'm just eyeballing this there is no I'm not measuring this at all so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my punching my holes and then I will be my holes are made and there is a thing called a saddle stitch but that is not the stitch that I'm going to use and you want your thread to be on the inside so I'm going to go from the inside like so here and I am going to tie a little knot 
at the end of it. I don't remember if that's what I did last time, but I'm going to this time. So I'm going to tie a little knot and I'm going to, sorry, I'm off camera. I'm going to go up. Going to go up the next and back in that first hole again. I'm going to go back in it. And what I'm going to end up doing here, and I hate when that happens, is I'm going to do a back stitch. So now I will go up this one, up the next hole, and down. And I'm just going to do that all. and you can see here I've ended up on the outside of the book which is not what you want and that happened to me last time and I'm fine with that so what I do is I bring it back in to the inside and I make a knot like so so I go through and then I go through and then I pull it until I have a knot and then I do that one more time I just want to make sure that I'm pretty secure here at the end. And then I snip this off. Snip, snip. And I kind of tuck that under. And then I take that, you see this long thread here, and I tuck this under. See if it'll cooperate with me. Apparently, I can't talk. So I slide that under there. And then I do that again. And it's just a little bit of patience and pushing it. Pushing it through. Okay, then we take the binder clips off, okay, because my book is now secured together, and you refold. Okay, so here is my Midori notebook. So as you can see, here it is, here it is. Now, what I did with this one, with the one that I've done previously, here no, trusty I have had these since I was a little itty bitty girl which is forever forever ever and then for cutting I love my let me move all this stuff oops shaking the camera okay I love my glass mat for this all right, so what I do is I get the book itself on an actual line and I have the Tim Holtz ruler with the metal um, side and I line it up with the end of my paper like so and I literally just keep cutting with my X-Acto knife until 
I have trimmed all of my paper. Do you have to do this step? Absolutely not. You don't have to. But I prefer it. And I think, I think I used this one last time too. Can't remember. It's not going through. That blade might not be. This one's bending. But it happened and I fixed it. I actually took um, my little sanding tool and you can see here, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But for this one, truly, I'm going to roll with it. So you can see here, the bottom is flush. The um, cardstock and the graph paper is flush at the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim literally by just using the paper as a guide and I'm going to trim this off. say these um, fine tip scissors are the best so if you don't have a pair of fine tip scissors you should definitely grab you a pair now I don't have a book press um, but what I did with the, and this one doesn't really seem like it needs it this one that I have done previously it did I needed to um, I needed to press on it so I have a dictionary and I literally just left it underneath the dictionary for days so if you find that you need to do that you can and then all you have to do is pick such side you want to be your the front and because my seam is going a little bit more towards this side so I can see the thread a little bit more I will most likely use this side as my front and there you go you have your own Midori Traveler's Notebook it didn't cost you a penny except for the papers and the awesome papers that I'm sure you already have. Um, thanks for watching uh, this tutorial from me. I made this tutorial specifically for 30 Days of List.